Hey guys, uh, so before we get to Xur, there was a pretty big announcement yesterday. Activision released their earnings report, or their earnings call, whatever, and in said report came the following with regards to Destiny. Taken King expansion launched with record digital attach rates, good for them. Uh, 25 million users registered uh, over 3 billion hours, alright. Large new expansion in 2016 with full game sequel expected to launch in 2017. That's what I'm talking about. There were a few more notes in this week at Bungie, which you can find in the description, but that's basically the gist of it. We'll be getting more information about this 2016 expansion, I assume, in the coming months. I think the reason is sort of obvious now as to why Bungie really couldn't talk about anything, or why they didn't talk about anything, and it's because it was probably locked behind Activision's earnings call, sealed by an NDA or whatever. Um, Bungie's update was posted minutes minutes after the earnings call so there's very little doubt that it had something to do with them staying so silent nevertheless it's nice to know that something is coming not that i thought that nothing was coming or anything like that because obviously something was going to come but it's it's just nice to hear bungie say it you know and tell us um a lot of people are speculating based off of a picture that predates destiny even coming out that this next big update will be the Vex Void expansion that you might have heard of uh, that this old timeline had planned. Personally, I have no idea what it'll be because, well, that picture is very, very old, and I'm sure their timeline has changed significantly since, you know, the launch of Destiny. I know that there are rumors floating around that the next game will be called Destiny the Shattered Suns, but that's really all that is, just a rumor. And I think that rumor was based off of a Reddit post that has since been deleted along with the account, the account that was used to post that rumor. So, yeah, uh, there's something in the pipeline, and it's nice to hear it. But for, as for anything non-speculation heavy, that's, that's all I really got for you guys for now. Uh, let's check out Zer. Hello, hello, everyone. It is week number 75 for Zer. He's hanging out in the hangar. Looking at all the ships, let's see what he's got. Starting from the bottom, we have Plasma Drive and Emerald Coil for those rare blue quality sparrows. Three heavy ammo packs for one strange coin, five three of coins for seven strange coins, three glass needles for a whole bunch of stuff, and one mode of light for two strange coins. Titans. You're getting Peregrine Greaves. You're also getting, as side bonuses, bonus shotgun or machine gun ammo. That's nice for PvP. And Arc Double Down. The main bonus gets you triple shoulder charge damage if you charge in the air. Are there times where you can get a hilarious PvP kill against people who are in a super? Sure. Is it nice to sorta guarantee a kill on high armor opponents? Maybe something like... A warlock using the ram. Yes. Do those opportunities come by often enough to warrant the use of these? My thinking is probably not. These are for fun, for screwing around, and I really don't think too much more than that. If we ever see an arc burn, airborne, brawler, nightfall, then yeah, you can break these out for some hilarious PvE action, but otherwise, these are really not needed. Hunters. You're getting Celestial Nighthawk. We have side bonuses of bonus super energy from grenade kills or PvE heavy kills. Not bad. With better already. The main bonus turns your three golden gun shots into one shot, but the one shot deals six times the damage. For PvE gunslingers, I think this is the go-to. It does what golden guns should be doing, instantly annihilating things. It's not great for orb generation, though. That being said, I think Night Stalkers are better overall for PvE, so I don't know how much you'll really get out of this helm if you're looking to completely optimize your loadout, but if you don't really care what your loadout is, and you don't really care what your spec is or your subclass, then the Nighthawk is going to treat you pretty, pretty well. Warlocks. You are getting Obsidian Mind. Side bonuses include bonus super energy from melee kills or PvE special weapon kills and innervation. The main bonus... Gives you more super energy when you kill with Nova Bomb or reduces the cooldown of your next Nova Bomb. Same thing. This thing is designed to just continuously feed you as many supers as possible. 
And with a build that can generate a ton of super energy, maybe something like Bad Juju added that into the mix, this is really fun to use. It even works alright with my energy drain build, although I do prefer nothing manacles with that build as opposed to Obsidian Mind. Voidwalker is still a very good subclass for Warlocks, and this helm is one of the best things to wear for PvE Voidwalkers. For PvPers, this is basically a non-factor, so you can ignore it unless you're getting 3 plus kills every single time you use Nova Bomb, and even then, it's kinda whatever. No weapon this week, instead, we have the exotic Glove Engram Year 2 Gloves. Things to look out for include, but are not limited to, Sealed Ahamkara Grasps, Ruin Wings, Claws of Ahamkara, Nothing Manacles, and the Impossible Machines. The Legacy Engram is the Helm, so that's Year 1 Helms at Year 1 Armor Values, 170 is the maximum value. If you manage to get a Year 1 Helm that is also in Year 2, you will unlock the Year 2 version in your Blueprints. That is going to wrap up Xur for week number 75. Not a great showing. Uh, go see Deadpool this weekend. I'm going to go try and see it sometime this weekend. Been hearing nothing but good things about the movie. Glad to hear that turned out well. Go, go see that. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all next time.